Hey everyone, how are you all doing today? Today is Monday, of course, and what is Monday without story time? Absolutely boring and dreadful, that's what it is. So here's a story time, but first I'd like to kick it off with what I've been doing recently in RuneScape. I usually always do that, so you should know the deal by now. But first of all, right now I am doing Pyramid Plunder, and the reason is because I set a little mini goal of getting full Black Ibis and the Scepter of the Gods. So I would really like to obtain that just because it's something cool to have. I could put it in my house and put it in my uh, costume room or whatever it's called. And I can keep the Scepter of the Gods, get rid of all these Pharaoh Scepters. So that would be a pretty cool thing to get. I have the Black Ibis legs already. I got lucky and got those. But it took me about 3 mil thieving XP to actually get them. So I don't consider myself lucky. Uh, I was kind of due a piece. But now it's just time to get the rest and the Scepter of the Gods. So hopefully I'll get that soon. If not, I'll be kind of upset. But... I'm at 19.3 mil thieving XP, I got up to like rank 2000 in thieving, so it's pretty interesting, I'd like to get over 20 mil, maybe 26 mil to get 99 twice, that would be a pretty cool goal to achieve, so we'll see where this goes, I've just been doing this for fun recently, it's actually not boring to me, and it keeps me active and keeps me focused, so I actually really like doing Pyramid Plunder, so if you'd like to do Pyramid Plunder with me at any times, I'm usually here whenever I'm online, and I'll probably be my friends chat, so you could check there, but if you need to train thieving and you want to train it with me, you can come to World 89 and just come to Pyramid Plunder and join my friends chat to see if I'm online. And chances are I'm there. You can ask me if I'm there or not and I will reply to you. But I'll most likely be here. So if you want to do it with me, just head over to 89 and you could plunder with me. But anyways, what I've been doing recently this week is I did the God Wars remastering with a few friends. I actually soloed a Bandos helmet the day of the release. So that was really awesome. I sold it for 30.7 mil. I'll put a picture on the screen right now of the drop. And it was just awesome because I really wanted to get a drop the first day of the new items release and I got the Bandos helmet which was awesome I actually really like it and I want to buy one back but of course the first day all the prices are crazy so I sold it for 30 mil and it was just awesome and actually I did so much God Wars I actually made around 70 or 80 mil with my friends we got a duo Arma Hilt we got two Garb of Subjugations we've got the Bandos helmet which I got and just overall I made around 80 mil and that actually gave me enough money to support my mini goal of a trim completionist cape and the only buyable goal on that kind of list thing is all of the rewards from the artisans workshop so I have to do that I already have the royal golden cannon so all I have to do really is get all of the rest of the rewards I think it's 290 percent I need so I've got a lot of work to do but I'm spending about 40 or 50 mil on just that goal itself so I have that bank now and I'll probably do that eventually but I'm just glad to have that out of the way because I guess if I have money now, I might as well spend it on something productive or something that unlocks something else. So I'll do that and get that requirement for the Trim Completionist Cape out of the way and then just continue on with my life. But anyways, you guys are probably tired of hearing what I've been doing in RuneScape, so you would like to hear the story time now. And let's get to it. This story time is going to be basically the main goal behind it and the main story or message behind it is going to be to never give up on what you do and never give up on your kind of style because a lot of people are going to tell you to change or a lot of people are going to tell you to do something differently but stick to your own roots and stick to what you know best if you enjoy doing what you do stick to it so anyways I got this kind of message and moral from a story that personally hits home to me is bowling now you guys are probably going to be like how are you relating bowling to not giving up on what you want to do and stuff well this is how my whole family's been involved in bowling for many, many years. My grandpa bowled, my dad bowled, my dad was actually a pro bowler, and he has three patents in bowling products, and I won't release that information on what products, but he's got three patents, and we run a bowling alley right now. He owns a bowling alley out here on Long Island, so it's really awesome to be involved in this kind of like bowling community, and bowling's just been a big part of my life and a big part of my family's life forever now. So I pretty much got born into bowling, and I was born with kind of a natural talent, I should say, because I'm not one who really practiced and, you know, put hours of work into bowling. I kind of just picked it up and went with it. But when I picked it up, I was four years old, and my dad always said, put all your fingers in the ball. And I would, but as a four-year-old, I was really, really weak, and I just didn't, you know, have the strength to pick up the whole ball. So I took my ball, and I held it with two hands, even though all my fingers were in the ball. I held it with two hands, and I threw it. Just cocked my arms back and threw it with two hands down the lane, and my dad laughed. You know, he's like, oh, he's obviously, you know, too weak to do this, and he'll grow out of it, and he'll throw with one hand eventually. Well, that wasn't the case for me. As I got older, I kept doing that method because it was just right to me. It's what I knew how to do, and it just felt right, and I stayed with that until today. I'm still bowling with two hands, 
And it's crazy because back in the day, everyone would be like, wow, your son is, you know, really weird at like, you know, bowling. Like, why does he bowl with two hands? What is, what's that about? Like, why does he do that? You know, is, is he know he's being different? No, that's not the correct way to bowl. And he would tell people, oh, he'll switch eventually. He'll switch to one. And I never did. And he kind of supported it after a while. Like, he would try to get me to throw with one hand. And at a point when I was like eight or 10, I started to get a little bit better with it and a little bit more controlling. I mean, I used to just hook the whole lane. I used to just go crazy and have no form. I just had two hands and went and threw it on the lane. So as I got older, I got better at it. And my dad actually supported it. And he's actually like, you know, you can get really good at this. And, you know, let me just teach you a few things. And he actually like worked with me and he taught me how to, you know, have a better form, have a better release, you know, throw it better. And I just kept getting better and then it came around the time when I was a high school bowler and I tried out for the team in ninth grade my freshman year of high school and the coach was literally like well is he going to switch to one hand I mean he can't just bowl with two hands that's not like not normal and that was not a normal thing at the time and now if you go to a bowling alley or if you're a bowler you know this or if you bowl for college if you bowl for high school if you bowl in a league you'll probably see a bunch of two-handed bowlers around and it's become a little bit more mainstream and I'm not saying I'm a hipster or something like that but it's become a little bit more mainstream because kids see now the new pros doing it like Jason Belmonte or Oscar Palerma they're bowling with two hands on TV and they're like wow that's sick they have so much speed they have so many revs they can hook the whole lane and so many kids want to do it so back when I started none of these pros were actually mainstream and none of them were actually like getting a lot of credibility and you know this style of bowling wasn't very popular so people would actually come up to me and go oh wow he's unique he bowls different or you know two hands that's really you know just weird like that's different than one-handed bowling and now since it's more mainstream when you go into a bowling alley you know people just assume that you know you bowl with two hands because you know all of these pros because of Jason Belmonte because of Oscar Palermo and it's kind of funny nowadays because I used to just get, oh, you're so unique, you're so unique, how do you do that? And now everyone just goes, oh, are you trying to be Jason Belmonte or did you start bowling like this a year ago when he got popular? And it's funny because I can always say, no, I've bowled that way my whole entire life since I was four years old. And so back to my high school story is when I was a freshman in high school, my coach wanted me to change. And he, you know, he used to make me throw one game at the end of every practice with one hand. And tell me, you know, oh, you should switch to one hand, you're getting stronger, you're going to get bigger when you get older, and you're going to have more power, and, you you know, throwing it with one hand is the right thing to do. And I was just like, "Eh, no, I'm going to stick with two hands, I'm going to stick with two hands, I'm not going to bowl with one. And at the time in ninth grade, I still wasn't very good at bowling. I was, you know, averaging about a 160, 170. So I wasn't anything amazing. I wasn't doing, you know, amazing numbers. And my whole ninth grade year, I pretty much played the practice squad, which I, I practiced with the team. I didn't, you know, bowl in matches. I didn't sub in matches. I just kind of was on the team, but not really. So my 10th grade year, I tried out and I became a sub. So I was a sub for starters. The starters would say bowl bad and I would come in, but I got better with my two-handed style. And my coach was still like, oh, you should bowl with one hand. You should bowl with one hand. And, you know, he kept trying to make me change and he kept trying to, you know, make me like everyone else. And I was just like, no, I'm going to just stick with two hands. I'm going to do this. And he's like, okay, but you might not ever start. You might not ever get really good. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. And I was just like, I'm not really worried about it. This is how I know how to bowl. And this is how I like to bowl. So my 11th grade year, I was about to try out for the team. And this was actually when I hit my, like, I guess my peak at bowling. This is when I started getting really good. And this is when I started getting, like, controlling of my ball. When I started having power over my ball. When I got bigger and stronger, I started working out my 11th grade year and I started just bulking up a little bit, getting a little bit more muscle and actually working on my bowling technique, not just the form, but also how I threw it. And I just got overall better and pretty much perfectly molded my craft. And I'll never forget, I tried out in 11th grade on my high school team because you always have to try out no matter if you were on the team before, but you have to try out. So I tried out and my first game, I shoot 240 and my coach goes, oh, wow, Lee, you've improved. And he sees me throwing it, you know, much better than I was in my past two years on the team. And the next game I shot like 220. And he's like, okay, wow, you're doing very good. And my last game was the first time I ever had front 11. And now if you don't know what front 11 means is that I had 11 strikes in a row, 12 being a 300 game. And I had the front 11 strikes. And my friend was literally like, Lee, you know, (laughs) the coach is so impressed. Like, this is crazy. Like, what are you doing? You're going animalistic this is insane and I just go I'm just throwing it good right now I'm just I'm feeling it and my coach was watching the whole time and I had the whole bowling alley because tryouts were at the same time as a lot of people's other tryouts so 
the high school teams would all come down to this bowling alley and they would try out at the same place. And there was four different teams that bowled at the bowling alley that we practiced at. So as we were practicing, everyone stopped and saw I was on front 11. So I'm throwing my third shot in the 10th frame and I literally just threw it a little bit too slow and I hit the pocket good, but I left the seven pin and I shot 299. And my coach was just like, well, you're starting, you know, this is, you know, I don't, I don't think we should change you anymore. I think you're, you're fine the way you are. And it was such a cool thing to like have the approval of everyone. I mean, I don't care about the approval of anyone. I would do it regardless if it wasn't the right thing to do. If it's something that I enjoy doing and it's something that I specifically do and I did it my way and I'm, I know I'm comfortable with doing it and I enjoy doing it, then I'm never going to change to satisfy anyone. But it was awesome to have the approval of everyone just be like, okay, you're finally mastering this kind of craft or style. And it was just so cool. You know, my dad was all smiling and everything like that. And it was funny because that was the first time I was ever on front 11, like I said, ever. So I never had a 300 game before that. But two weeks later in my bowling league, I was on front 11 again. And on my last shot, I was like, I'm just going to throw it, you know, a little bit harder than I did in the last shot and just, you know, not throw it a little slow, just keep it good and keep it on the lane. And I threw it and I shot my first 300 ever. And that was awesome. That was about four years ago I shot my first 300 ever. And then about three months after that, I shot my first 800 series, which I shot an 815, which is a combination of three games to combine up to an 800 score. And I shot 279, 269, 268 for 815. So I was really happy about that. Or it was 267, I forget. It was either 67 or 68. Whatever equals 815. So I was extremely happy that I was able to learn my craft and teach myself with the help of my dad how to bowl with two hands effectively and make it just as strong as anyone who bowls with one hand and have it accepted amongst my peers. So I just stuck with what I love to do and I stuck with my craft and I stuck with how I enjoy bowling, how I learned bowling, how I saw bowling in my eyes. And I just wanted to be different than everyone else. And it wasn't the fact that I chose this path. I didn't say, oh, I'm going to be a two-handed bowler to be different. It was just the fact that the ball was too heavy for me when I was younger. And I just took that and kept going with it. I mean, I guess I didn't really get strong until about 10th or 11th grade. I was pretty much weak my whole entire life until now. (laughs) But I just kept going with it, and I was still weak, and the ball was still heavy for me, and I just kept going with it. And I stuck with it, and with the help of my dad, I was able to prove that this is a, a nice style of bowling and that I can control this, and I can keep power behind it, and I can do well with this style. So... For anyone who's doing anything, whether it's a drawing style or a gameplay style or a sport you play, if you're just different in any way on what you do or what you love to do, don't change for anyone. Don't try to please anyone. Just work really hard and perfect that kind of style or that whatever you do. Just make sure that you perfect it and you can show everyone your talent with how you react and how you actually participate in what you do. Make sure you just you shut them up with your talent. You're just raw talent and your ability to be different and succeed because nothing feels better than proving people wrong, saying, oh, you'll never be able to do this. This isn't going to be good. This isn't consistent. And a lot of people just don't understand that fact that you can do other things and do a different style and just do something different and be great. And I was so happy that I was accepted by my coach, my my teammates, and my dad was fully embracing my two-handed style. And before it was big, like I said, you know, it was something different and unique to come by. And nowadays, a lot of people bowl with two hands. So if you go to a bowling alley and you see someone with two hands, think of me because that kid is definitely being a change in the world. And that's awesome. So besides that, that's pretty much my main point behind this is to literally just, if you are different or you have a different style of something, don't change because that's what the normal thing is to do. If you do something differently, stick with it. Just keep going with it. Keep getting better at it and just keep doing you because nothing is better than doing you pretty much. Just being yourself and having fun and knowing you can do this specific style of something different just means the world because you're a different person than everyone else and you can feel the sense of uniqueness and pride of doing something that you do yourself that no one else does. So just be yourself and be unique and just keep up with your stuff. Don't let anyone tell you to change or do something differently because, you know, one reason. And don't take that out of context. You guys like to take stuff out of context by saying, oh, don't listen to what anyone tells me to do. I'm going to rob a store. You know, <laughs> Obviously, I'm not telling you to go rob a store. I'm telling you, say, if you have a different bowling style than everyone else, stick with it and don't just change because, you know, you, you're not good yet. Just get better at it and show everyone that you are good now. So anyways... That's my story, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to try to sneak a bowling clip somewhere around like this time of myself bowling with two hands just so you can see what it's about. But I'll also link my vlog where I actually bowl 
and I'll show you how I actually bowl because I have a video of bowling on my second channel, which is my real life channel, of me actually bowling with some friends. So I'll link that in the description if you're interested in seeing that. And also a little sub story on this is I actually met a RuneScape YouTube video maker by the name of So Wrecked or Matt, and he makes PK videos on YouTube for RuneScape. And I found out that he lived near me because we did the live stream together on the RuneScape official YouTube channel, and we got to know each other, and we found out that he actually lives like 20 or 30 minutes away from me, and that he actually bowls with two hands as well, and he just switched over. He used to bowl with one hand, and then he switched to two, but he bowled with two hands too. And I said, hey man, you want to go bowling, or you want to go hang out and you know meet each other and kind of bowl at my bowling alley, we'll bowl for free, we'll have some fun. He's like, yeah, so we actually met about a week ago, and we bowled some games, and it was awesome seeing another two-handed bowler. He's a lefty, and I'm a righty, so it was really cool seeing a lefty two-handed bowler. And it was just fun to just, you know, chop it up with another YouTube video maker and just meet him. It's pretty cool to have another YouTube video maker for RuneScape on the island, and I can hang out with him now, so that's pretty cool. So that's something awesome. I just thought that was a little cool fact that you guys should uh, know. So I hung out with Sorect, and he's an awesome guy, very nice person. And anyways, that's the uh, end of the story time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love bowling. It's still a part of my life. I was the captain of my high school team my 11th and 12th grade year, and I actually got recruited to bowl for my college, and I bowled the first two years, and this is my third year, but I'm not bowling on the team because I have different views than the coach. I don't like the schedule. I have six classes in college this year, so I really don't have any time to bowl, and I just you know have no time for it. So I won't be on the team this year, but I want to try to bowl my senior year because I'll probably have fun with it then, and we go to Vegas, and we have a lot of fun trips, so it would be a very fun thing to do as a senior. But I did my first two years. I was the top 25 rookies in the nation my freshman year. And I just achieved so much from bowling just with my style. And that just goes to show you that really you can make anything possible with however you want to do it. I mean, I started video making even with such a simple editing style. And I just kept that simple and clean and story kind of mode through RS and Vs. And I just kept my own style and got better with it. And I taught myself how to edit. And now this is the result. So... I'm just really blessed to be able to be creative and have my own kind of unique way at things and people support it and people, you know, enjoy it and people embrace it. So it's such an honor to be a unique individual. And I hope you guys are all unique individuals as well. You were born on this earth as an original. Don't die as a copy. Be yourself and be original. So anyways, guys, that's all for the story time. If you guys have a certain topic you want me to speak about or whatever for story time, let me know in the comments below and post your stories below about how you do something different. Tell me about anything you do differently than someone else, whether it's batting weird in baseball or playing soccer a different way or bowling with two hands, anything. So let me know. I'd love to hear your guys' awesome talents. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Later, everyone.